Welcome back, everybody. If you're here, it's because you've successfully made one animated sequence with one camera, and now you're ready to do a second camera. Uh, you don't want to use the first camera. It's all set up and animated, doing something nicely like this. And so what you want to do is set up a second camera to do a different view. I want my camera now, another one, to start here and do a flyby of my object. So here we go. You just add another camera. And you'll see it pops up there. I'm going to sort of line it up as best as I can, sort of straight above the object. And let's see what this camera is seeing by hitting zero on the number pad or by going view camera. And whoa, it's not going to the camera we just made. When I hit zero on the number pad, it's definitely going to my old camera. Well, that's because this old camera is currently set as the active camera, which means the main camera. So what I want to do is I don't want this to be the main one. I want this one to be the one I'm now working with. So what I do is you just select the camera that you want to be the main one and go view, camera, set active camera as camera. That sets it as the main one, and it even zooms in to show you what it's seen. So now when I hit zero, that's the camera that I get to work with. So, move the camera where you want it, okay? If you want to do any of the tricks I did before, like Alt-R to reset the rotation, rotate Y 90, enter, rotate X 90, enter. That's good. Uh, now you can see we're looking straight ahead. What I'm going to do for this particular video is I'll show you a little bonus trick here. I'm going to make the camera constantly look at the cube. So here's how you do that super fast. Right click the camera, hold the shift key down, and right click the cube. So they're both selected. Now just go object, track to constraint. Another fast way, you could have hit just control T. So watch this, control T, track to constraint. What this does is now wherever you move the, whoops, let's right click the camera. Wherever you move the camera, it looks at the cube. Now let's do our animation. You'll notice here that my camera has no keyframes. This camera has keyframes, but this camera has its very own timeline. That's good. It means we can do whatever we want with this camera. So here we go. Let's set it. Okay, good. Location and rotation are going to be recorded. I'm on frame one. I like where it is. I hit keyframe. Now I jump somewhere in time, like 100. I move the camera to some new location. Let's say I like that. I hit keyframe. And let's say I go further in time, I go down a bit, I hit keyframe, and you'll see here I'm leaving my keyframes behind in the timeline, and it's going from A to B to C, and now let's check out our video. Let's rewind, let's hit zero on the numpad to see what our camera sees, and hit play. Now this is going to make this video, and you can take from whatever frame to whatever frame you like. So if you like frame 20 to frame 80, you can video that up later on. So that's the basics of adding the second camera. You can repeat this process all you want, and basically every time you add another camera, I'll do it again, add camera. Now if I want to start working with this one, select, whoops, select camera, Whoa, come on. Let's do this again. View. Camera. Set active camera. There we go. Okay, and that's what it's seen. Okay, move it around. If you want to track it, remember what that was again. Hold the shift key. Right-click the cube. Object. Track to constraint. And now that camera. Whoops. Right-click the camera. That camera is always falling. You can do this over and over, and each camera can have its own little timeline, and you'll make videos from all three. 
So that's how you add the extra cameras. Thanks for watching.